Hello class. Today we'll talk about design features of language. We call it design features because the features that we're going to talk about today about human language are the you know intrinsic part of human language design and they represent the nature and character of language. They are also known as Hockett's design feature because Charles Ferguson Hockett published his work in 1960 in the origins of speech in scientific American right? and he derived 13 total features in the beginning. Later on, three more were added. So, making it completely 16 features. Now, they are fundamental design features of human any human language because they are the defining elements of a language. Right? Uh, so, Ferguson Hockett, Charles Ferguson Hockett, popularly known as uh, you know, design Hawker's design feature. He talks about certain fundamental features of language and how human communication system is distinct, unique, species specific, and particular to human. There are certain features that he talks about also are found in uh, you know other animal communication systems. But it's the but only it's human that have human language that have that has you know uh, all these features. No other species, no other uh, system in the in the entire animal kingdom has these features, right? And that is why they are they are known as language design features. How can design feature of language? Uh, so number one, he talks about vocal auditory channel. This is the first design feature, vocal auditory channel, right? So, we need to understand that language is primarily oral. Writing system came to language very late. And writing system is a recording mechanism in terms of orthographic symbols, scripts, right? So, here we are talking about primarily language as an oral phenomena. So, orality is the primary focus here and all these features of language that we are going to talk put into that idea that language is primarily oral. So, the first feature is vocal auditory channel. Vocal voluntarily produced sounds with the help of uh, you know all, all other vocal organs and auditory the system of receiving these sounds right so it so they together create a channel vocal production of sound and auditory reception of sound so human language is basically a vocal or you know a vocal auditory thing and it is performed using the vocal tract and auditory channels Hockett viewed this as an advantage of human primates because it allowed for the ability to participate in other activities while simultaneously communicating through spoken language. So, while speaking, we can do other works, you know, you can walk or uh, you can, you know, lay down, lay out, uh, no, lay out the table or you can do any other thing and you can communicate, right. It, we communicate in terms of voluntarily produced vocal sounds, right? Uh, by the way, you might have noticed that all the sounds that we produce, we produce while we breathe out. And we have got a mechanism to manipulate the air volume with certain constructures in the entire vocal tract to produce different sounds, right? Then auditory channel allows us to receive these, these sounds, right? 
it's a two-way process right you produce and also you receive others of course others also receive so the first design feature of human language is that it is performed or it has vocal auditory channel then second one is broadcast transmission and directional reception so all human sounds can be heard by any other person any other human being any other individual if the sound is within the range of reception right so we can hear any sound produced around directional reception means that we have a binaural direction finding ability right so you can when you produce sound it is received from all, all in all directions it is received in all directions and you also receive sounds from all directions and uh, you can do this exp experiment in when you keep the room dark and if somebody makes a sound let's say in the left corner of the room or the right corner of the room in the front side of the room back side of the room if some sound comes from the top or from the floor without looking at the source of the sound you'll be able to understand and uh, you know guess the direction of sound so not only sound alone but also direction or the source of sound binaural direction finding ability that we have this allows us to produce sounds and transmit it in all directions for receiving by others and also allows us to receive any sound from any direction right without even physically looking at that even if your eyes are closed you can receive sound and you can guess that the sound is from my back side the sound is from my left the sound is from my right the sound is from my front or from top or maybe from the so so you can find the direction so this is what it means broadcast transmission that you produce a sound and it can be broadcast in all directions and also directional reception you can receive these sounds from any direction 360 degree so this is the second uh, design feature of human language then we move to third rapid fading or we call it transitory sounds transitory that's a character of uh, human language that wave forms of human language dissipate over time they don't stay right so instant reception is required so if i am speaking anyone in the proximity will receive the sound instantly it is not delayed or it it does not wave wait the waves won't wait in air for so it can never be the case that you know i speak something and then i leave the room and then somebody enters the room and listens to that, hears that sound it never happens it cannot happen so that's that's a basic character transitoriness so it is simultaneous its production of sound and reception of sound is simultaneous right so it fades away the moment i speak it fades away unless we keep a recording system like we are doing a video here and we play it again so at the time of production the reception happens simultaneously so transitoriness or what we call rapid fading another character of human language then the fourth design feature is interchangeability what does it mean so an individual has the ability to both speak and hear the same sound anything that a person is able to hear they have the ability to reproduce through spoken language so you perform both the roles roles of role of a speaker so is when you produce the sound at the same time simultaneously you are also listener of your own speech so you produce and you receive and it happens simultaneously and the roles are reversible and we have the ability to produce anything that we hear right so this is 
interchangeability right uh, next is total feedback you might have seen uh, in music concerts if you have gone to a music concerts you might have seen that you know we have multiple speakers around for audience but there are some speakers which have direction facing the performer the singer so the on the stage you might have seen that these speakers are put and they are facing facing the singer why do we do that because singer is singing so he doesn't have to worry about it because he can listen to his own voice but the singer wants to be con confirmed uh, that you know if his voice is traveling in a particular channel how it is being received by the audience so you might have seen that this this these speakers because he wants to monitor his own sound in that particular channel right you might have seen in music concerts speakers designated for singer alone and speakers for audience total feedback means a speaker has the ability to hear himself or herself while speaking and through this they are able to monitor their speech production and internalize what they are producing through language right imagine if the feedback is not possible then what i'm saying suppose that what i'm saying uh, i'm not able to hear that what will happen i have no clue what i'm speaking right total feedback so human language has this feature of total feedback which allows the speaker to monitor his or her own speech make corrections we do corrections while we speak right because we have the feedback we are the first person in the first person to give feedback to ourselves we we you know produce the sound we produce the speech and also we get the feedback right and uh, we can manage we can internalize and we can understand what we are producing so that is total feedback that's the fifth uh, you know design feature of human language then specialization number 6 that is a specialization human language sounds are specialized for communication i you know uh, i earlier also i told you that individual sounds don't mean anything but they are put in a particular combination in a string to give you some meaning so everything that we speak every word that we speak represents an objective reality or reality around us right and it triggers a mental image and when i say dog it triggers a mental image so every word that we speak or the sentences that we speak they carry certain meaning right we don't have meaningless words and meaningless sentences we don't produce meaningless words and meaningless sentences so when you produce speech or uh, you know these these sentences words phrases clauses they all carry meaning and why do have these meanings to communicate to interact to socialize so language human language is designed to communicate meaning right some meaning out of it it neck it can never be meaningless all right a specialization refers to that human languages sound are specialized for communication because they carry the chunks combinations strings carry certain meaning unlike other animals like for example panting of a dog right so not necessarily they have some meaning to communicate but it is for cooling them themselves you know dogs pant to cool you know themselves or for example you know the dance of bees right so different dances represent uh, the distance between nectar and hive but otherwise so they don't have the kind of specialized developed system that human language has right 
human language goes beyond time and space. We'll, we'll come to that very quickly. Next is semanticity. That means special signals or the words or the sentences carry special meaning, right? We never use or produce a word or a sentence that doesn't have meaning. Because if it doesn't have meaning, it's not a word. If it doesn't have a meaning, it's not a sentence. So we produce meaningful words, meaningful sentences. And uh, there if every, everything that we produce, every signal that we produce, it represents or triggers certain image or uh, certain reference. So it gives us meaning. So semanticity refers to meaningfulness of human language. Right? Every chunk or word or utterance sentences that we produce, they all carry certain meaning. Then number eight is arbitrariness. Interesting, this is very interesting. Arbitrariness. So there is no limitation to what can be communicated about and there is no specific or necessary connection between sounds used and the message being sent. Arbitrary. That means sound ka, it doesn't carry any meaning individually. As a, as a sound or pa as a sound doesn't have any meaning. Ka as a sound doesn't have any meaning. But they are combined in a particular way. And when they are combined in a particular way, like cow for that matter, pen for that matter, fan for that matter, they give us a certain meaning. They refer to something, right? Some object. Or they, they trigger some mental image. All right? But when we look at the relationship or connection between a word called, let's say, pen and the actual object called pen, there is no one-to-one -one relationship. So why a pen is called a pen, a fan is called a fan, right? You might have seen different words for pen in different languages. So you'll have different words, let's say in Hindi we call it Kalam. In Telugu, you call it something else. In Tamil, you something else. Every language will have a word for pen or, or a fan, or maybe for, take an example. But that doesn't change the objective reality of the world. A pen will be pen, whether you call it in English or in Hindi or in Telugu or in any language. Right? Because there is no one to one relationship. So the character or the property of the object has nothing to do with the way it is named. So your name, right, has no direct link and connection with you as a person and your characteristics. Right? It is arbitrary. This relationship is arbitrary. So isn't it beautiful that with the help of you know these sounds, which are individually meaningless, we create strings and the meanings assigned to them are arbitrary, but we are able to perfectly you know, communicate with each other, socialize and interact. That's the beauty of language. Arbitrariness is another important design feature. Then we move to discreteness. Discreteness refers to the uniqueness of each sound a particular language may have. Right? So these sounds are discrete in nature, different in nature, distinguishable. You can you can recognize them separately. They do not overlap. So pa is not ba, ba is not ka, ka is not cha, cha is not ta, ta is not la. So all these sounds that a language has in any language, they are unique, identifiable, are you know arbitrary and discrete. We can count them. And interesting to see that every language has a limited set of sounds which are discrete, they can be counted, they are distinguishable, identifiable, right? And uh, they can be differentiated, right? So it's not a single you know, stretch sound or, or, or blurred sound. Every, word, every sound has a boundary. So one sound and other sound begins. In a word, we are able to identify a word. You know, because we have different sounds in that particular word. 
then number 10 is displacement what is displacement displacement means language allows you to go beyond the front limitations of time and space that means language can represent something which is not really present in the space and something which has not happened in the particular synchronized time that I am speaking at the time of speaking. So, I can defy the limits of time and space, human language can defy the limits of time and space and it can transcend the limits. So, I can talk about something happened five years back, I can talk about something I am planning to do next year. So, time, the limits of time can be defined in terms of language. Also, space. I can talk about someone in Delhi sitting while sitting in Chennai, right? Or I can talk about someone uh, in New York sitting in Delhi, right? So, the person or the event or the idea does not necessarily have to be present here while I am talking about it. So, language allows us to defy and transcend the limits of time and space. This is displacement. It is a very uh, you know, unique uh, character of human language which is not found in any of the animal communication system. Right? So, uh, it is not it allows us to be, you know, to, to travel in time and to cover uh, unimagined space. That is the beauty of language, human language, and that is called displacement. Then, productivity. Now, Chomsky also talked about finite set of linguistic elements and infinite set of output that we have. So, human language has finite set of linguistic elements like sounds for that matter. Every language has a particular number of sounds, but if you look at the words it produces, sentences it produces, they are unlimited, right. So, English is restricted to let us say 24 consonants and 20 vowels if we broadly look at it. It's total 44 sounds. But with this 44 sounds, we can't actually count the number of words we can produce out of it. Similarly, we can't count the number of utterances and sentences we can produce out of all these words. So, it gives you an infinite productivity with a finite set of elements available in that particular language. That is, that is infinite productivity of human language. That is the beauty of it. It is very important design feature, character of human language. Then we have traditional transmission number 12. Now, what do you mean by traditional transmission? Human language or any particular language is inherited from older generation to the new generation, right? It is not completely innate. Okay, let us not confuse the idea with which Chomsky uses the word innate, but we go by the general idea called innate. So, language is not genetically inherited, right? It is learned. It is transferred, it is transmitted from one generation to the other. So, when the human child is born, the child acquires language in a social environment, right? And uh, it is transmitted traditionally, right? That is the only reason why, suppose a Hindi speaking parent adopts, uh, let us say, a Tamil speaker child, a child from Tamil speaking parent, child will acquire Hindi as mother tongue, not Tamil, because language is not genetically transferred. 
it is learnt in a social environment. But traditional transmission means that language is not completely innate and acquisition depends in part on the learning of a language in a particular social environment. And this is possible in human societies, not in other animal king, you know, uh, species, not in other species. And in this entire animal kingdom, language is traditionally transferred only for a human child, right? So this is a peculiar, particular human language feature. Then the 13 is duality of patterning. That means we have multiple layers of meaning, right? Uh, so the meaningless segments or units called sounds are combined to make meaningful words. Then these meaningful words can further be combined to get meaningful sentences. Then these meaningful sentences can further be combined to get meaningful paragraphs and then the whole discourse, right? So, this is called, this ability of language to do so is known as duality of patterning because the existing elements can be used, linguistic elements can be used and reused for different meanings and different purposes, right? So, while Hockett believed that all communication systems, uh, among all communication systems, animal and human alike, they share many of these features, right? But only human language contains all the 13 design features and additionally, traditional transmission, duality of patterning are the key to human language system. So, these are 13 uh, primary design features that Hockett talked about, but in a report published in 1968 with an anthropologist and scientist, Stuart A. Altman, Hockett derived three more design features. See, he added three more features to human language, understanding human language, and these three features are for example, prevarication, reflexivity, and learnability. So, prevarication refers to the ability of human being to represent something which is not true. So, if you go by the ideal understanding of human language, it must represent objective reality and the truth if you go by the truth value theory. But human language allows us or we, the language that we speak allow us to represent falsehood. And we all are familiar that you know, oh, we all have spoken, uh, we all must have told the lies in life. We have uh, pretensions, we have uh, uh, falsehood, representing falsehood, we represent falsehood. Sometimes we create meaningless statements, irrelevant things that we produce. Prevarication is a very important phenomena and character of human language that it allows you, uh, you know, it allows deception. It allows us to represent falsehood. It can allow us to pretend, right? Which is not possible in any other animal communication system, right? So, pretensions representing falsehood, producing meaningless, sentence, meaningless sentences, they are not possible in any other uh, animal communication system. But la human language system allows us to do so. So, this is one of the most important characters. I mean, you might have seen kids around, how, who teaches them how to lie, how to tell a lie, right? Who teaches them how to tell a lie? right they learn it in 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 a social environment pretext the pretense we all learn and language allows us to do so so this is prevarication the 14th feature again is very crucial and important then we have 15th reflexiveness 
it is it is ironical it is uh, strange and it is also surprising to see that we need language to talk about language i'm talking about language to you with the help of language language can reflect upon itself you have no other mechanism to talk about language but the language itself so this is the reflexiveness so language represents language language reflects upon language language discusses language we can discuss about language i'm talking to you on language in a language called english right this is another character called reflexivity so reflexiveness that is the 15th design feature then we have learnability number 16 what does it mean that any individual can learn any language which is not possible a dog cannot learn how to roar a lion cannot learn how to bark right but a human i can learn french i am a hindi speaker i can learn telugu tamil french italian or any english speaker can learn hindi or tamil or telugu right so we have this free will to learn any language that's the beauty of human language that it allows any human to learn any language and this character is known as learnability that was the 16th character or 16th feature that hockett added to already 13 features so three features were added in 1968 uh, reflexiveness learnability and prevarication all right so these are known as hockett's design feature or design feature simply we call it of the human language because they are the you know you know de, you know design features which define human language and uh, in any other animal communication we do not find all these 16 features present so it is species is specific and uh, only human beings are endowed with this ability to have language which is such a beautiful complex phenomenon but interestingly it comes to us so naturally that we hardly notice the complexity of it that's the beauty of language thank you